much. CBS 42 is your local election headquarters, and today Congressman Mo Brooks is here to talk about joining the race for U.S. Senate in Alabama, seeking the Republican nomination. Congressman, it is good to have you here. Thank you for getting up so early to talk to us. My pleasure. Let's talk about what kind of candidate you want to be. Folks in the Tennessee Valley know you. Folks on the national stage know you as of late. What type of senator do you hope to be if you win the nomination and eventually that job? One who will fight to stop the march of socialism in America. Socialism is evil. It's dictatorial. It is the opposite of the liberty and freedom principles that are embodied in the Constitution. And for that matter, we're the basis of the Declaration of Independence. And our foundational principles are under attack on a regular basis. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion, right to bear arms. Even our election processes in 2020 we're under attack like we haven't seen in the history of the United States of America. And you, you continue to bring that up. Of course, um, President Trump's attorney general said late in his term that they didn't have any reasonable evidence that there was voter fraud widespread, but we've heard you make that point. We, we, I want to compare you with probably your leading opponent, Katie Britt. Well, wait a second. If you're going to bring up Bill Barr, let's get his quote right. He okay? said, he, he said he they did. found wait a minute, let me finish. on a scale that could have affected Bill a different Barr, outcome. He didn't find any widespread evidence. At that point in time, there had not been much of an investigation conducted. So, of course, at that point in time, he had not had the information that would have allowed them to have done what should have been done. But the evidence is overwhelming and compelling. And if you want to spend more time on it, I can go through it. But I really get upset when the news media just has a knee-jerk reaction saying there was no evidence of voter fraud, election theft. Well, the you can go back to the, you, you can go back to 2005, the Commission on Federal Election Reform report. Right. 2005, Jimmy Carter, James Baker, bipartisan, that identified systemic weaknesses in our election system, in which they warned that if we don't fix it, the, the President Trump's Attorney General did make that remark. I mean, that's a direct quote related specifically yes, to the fraud. Yes. What, what's issue. the date of it? Back near the end of his term, I believe it was in December. It was either in late November or early December, and right. the FBI and the Justice Department had not conducted the kind of investigation have they that needed so? to have been conducted have that would have so enabled yet? the Attorney General okay. to have the information that they needed Your point for is the well Attorney taken. General to make an informed decision. Let's talk about the Allies Act. You were one of 16 Republicans to vote against that process. It did pass the House, but the effort to make it easier for Afghan allies to get out of that country what was your no vote about on that specific piece of legislation? Sure. We cannot import all of the people who should be staying in their home country fighting for freedom. Are there people that we should help out of Afghanistan, allies of the United States? Well, under today's circumstances, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but please understand July, that right? if you take from Afghanistan the people who believe in liberty and freedom, then you are empowering the Taliban to do exactly what has happened. The leadership has collapsed in Afghanistan right. because the leadership has fled. Now, in the United States of America in 1776, our leaders did not flee when the issue was liberty and freedom. As the we Afghan fought and we has won. Done. Do you think, though, that there are allies of the United States that need to get out of that country right now that should have the ability to be evacuated it, like American citizens? Look, in my judgment, the outcome that we have seen, although badly mismanaged by the Biden administration, the outcome that we have seen was inevitable. Mm. If you look at history, name an instance in which the United States of America has been engaged in an Islamic nation where the outcome has been good. You might can say Kuwait, but Iran with the Shah of Iran, what happened? Right. We got the Ayatollah. Iraq, when we left, what happened? Right. We had the Islamic State rise. Afghanistan, the same thing. Libya, where Muammar Gaddafi was eliminated, his wanna, administration, by Barack Obama. What happened? Before we're out of time, to the, to the Alabama voter who, who and I, I, I know we have a few seconds left, what do you say to the Alabama voter who thinks about January 6th that things you said may have contributed to that mentality? And you've blamed sure. it on a lot of different things. Folks, that is absolutely fake news. There's not a single person who was at the Ellipse rally who saw my remarks who thought that in any way, shape, or form I was supporting violence in the United States Capitol. What happened was the fake news media, much like we've seen this morning, the fake news media takes things out of context and tries to make a point. You said my remarks about kicking, taking down names and kicking derrieres was in the context 
of the 2022 and 2024 elections, and you never see the fake news media give the full two-sentence paragraph. Instead, they take a snippet of the last sentence so that you, you don't know that I'm talking about the 2022-2024 election cycles in which we better fight for our country or we're going to lose it to dictatorial socialism. But you're not encouraging violence then? Absolutely not. Anyone who has watched the speech in its entirety understands that, except for the liberal Democrats who try to distort it and people in the fake news media who try to get hits. Congressman Mo Brooks, a candidate for U.S. Senate, with us this morning. Thank you for being here. My pleasure. Good to see you. We'll be right back on the CBS 42 Morning News.